In this one, I wanna quickly run you guys through the solar setup that we've got in the camper trailer. It's cheap, it's easy, and as you guys can tell from the title of the video, it's under 200 bucks. So let's quickly get into this so I can run you guys through the setup. Firstly, I wanna run you guys through the idea of the solar. So the idea that we had was it had to be cheap, it had to be easy to install, it had to be easy to remove, and it had to be really easy to add or remove solar. If anything went wrong with the panel, we had to be able to take it away and put a new one in, or if we wanted to add more solar down the line, we had to be able to do that as well fairly easily. So we already had the DC-DC charger and the lithium setup from iTech World. So we really only needed a panel. If you don't have a DC-DC charger in your setup, it doesn't matter. Most of these panels, including this one, actually come with a PWM or an MPPT regulator. Now, because price was at the very top of this idea, we obviously went and got a really cheap panel from Amazon or Catch the Day or somewhere like that. Now, the panel that we're running is a flat, flexible, monocrystalline panel. These things are definitely not the most efficient, but they definitely serve a good purpose as well. They're really, really flat, so they don't take up any room. They weigh next to nothing. And by and large, they're probably the cheapest panels on the market. This one actually only came in at about 160 or 170 bucks for a 350 watt 12 volt panel. Now, I'm not sure if they're still making this panel, but if they are, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Or if I can't find this exact panel, I'll leave a link in the description box to the closest match I can find. All right, so how does the whole setup work? Really, really easy. It's a simple plug and play setup that works just by simply being plugged into our DC-DC charger with a really simple two meter Anderson plug extension cable. Now, if you don't have an Anderson plug extension cable, you can make your own. All you need is two Anderson plugs and a length of six mil cable. But if you don't have the know-how or you don't have the gear to make one, they're pretty cheap. You can pick them up for about 10, 20 bucks at super cheap auto, BCF, anywhere that sells 12 volt gear, you can pick these things up really cheap. And just to help you guys out, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find one at the cheapest price at the moment. Now, being that it is plug and play, obviously that relies on me plugging it in and unplugging it every time we want to have the solar on or have the solar off. For us, that's not a big deal. First thing I do before I wind up the camper trailer is plug the solar in. So no matter where we are, we're going to start producing some charge back into the battery system. Now, some people might want this thing permanently hooked up and permanently plugged in generating power. But for us, it wasn't really a big deal. And to save actually drilling holes through the roof of the trailer and potentially causing some other issues, this was a very small price to pay. All right, now quickly just to run you guys through how the solar panel is installed on the roof. It's mounted by nothing more than VHB and UHB double-sided tape. I've mounted the panel down to a perforated plastic sheet and then that plastic sheet I've mounted to the roof surface itself. Now, the hardest part about this whole install was getting every surface spotlessly clean so the easiest way that i came up with was just to to give the camper trailer a real good wash let it dry do it again and then i went over every surface with methylated spirits that just made sure there was no dirt no contaminants and any of the surfaces that i was going to put the tape down to now the reason that i did use a perforated plastic sheet is you might know about flexible flat panels and they aren't really good with heat. There's nowhere for heat to escape when they get hot. So the idea of the sheet is to actually vent some of that heat out from underneath the panel. Whether it works or not, I think the jury's still out on that. I've definitely noticed a difference in our setup, but I don't know if it's just coincidence or if it is actually that sheet doing the job that I installed it for. All it really does is create a little couple of mil air gap under the panel so that some of that heat can get out. All right, now the last thing I wanna to touch on is just flexibility. That was, if you remember at the start of the video, I wanted to make this as easy as I could to either add solar or remove solar later on down the track if I wanted to. We haven't needed to, but this would have been a very flexible and easy system to modify. As easy as putting down another panel or another two or another three, however many panels I could put on the roof, I could put them up there and all it would take is for me to run that wiring back to the same Anderson plug and I've just doubled, tripled or quadrupled our capacity. So it is a very, very flexible setup. Now with all that being said, this is definitely the easiest and cheapest setup that I could possibly come up with. But in my opinion, I think it served us really well. We've been running this for about two years now and we haven't had a whisper of trouble from this panel or the DC-DC charger and our batteries are always up above 90%. 
bear in mind we don't use all that much power but at the same time we've never had our batteries dip below 90 and to be honest it does all of our power needs without any dramas at all and honestly if it wasn't for having a solar panel fixed mounted to the roof we wouldn't be able to stay off grid as long as we do we've been able to extend our trips probably two or three times what we would have done if we didn't have a solar panel fixed mounted to the roof yeah we can always have portable solar and that sort of thing but it's just one more thing you have to take with you where if you have this mounted to the top of your roof then it's as easy as that you don't have to ever worry about carrying anything or leaving it at home and getting where you've got to go and then obviously not having any solar so this has just been easy as anything, cheap as anything, and keeps us off grid for longer. All right, so a couple of pros and cons to the setup as a whole. Pros, it's the easiest setup you can possibly do. You don't need any specialized tooling. You don't need any experience in running cables or wires. It's really, really simple. You're not cutting any holes into your roof, so there's no risk of damaging any of your roof lining of your camper trailer or having any water ingress or anything like that into the roof cavity. That's definitely one of the biggest pros. And number three for the pros, it is cheap. Like I said before, this whole setup cost me less than 200 bucks. So really cheap, really easy, and no big risk of damage to the roof or anything else of your camper trailer. And some of the cons, okay. Cons, you're using a flexible panel. They're definitely not the most efficient. They heat up a lot and they lose a lot of their, you know, generating capacity. So that's definitely a con. You're not gonna get as much out of this panel as you are, say, a fixed glass panel or even maybe a solar blanket. Con number two, the VHB or UHB tape, it's not UV safe. So the tape that I've run around the outside of the solar panel, it's starting to decay, it's starting to fall apart, and it's really starting to show its age after two years on the roof. It's pretty much been in the sun most of its life, so it's all worn through. That being said, all the tape under the solar panel is still in perfect condition. It's never seen sun. So the main tape that's actually holding the panel down is all still brand new, there's nothing wrong with it, but anything that's exposed to the sunlight, whether, it's, whether that's tape, whether that's the panel itself, whether it's cabling, it's gonna start to show its age in the sun. And I guess con number three, this is more about the panel than anything. The panel that I bought and that I'll link down below in the description was a 350 watt flexible flat panel. I have not been able to get 350 watts out of it. Even in the middle of winter when it's freezing cold, this thing has not put out more than 300 watts. Now, 300 watts is definitely good, and it's very good for a sub $200 panel, but 350 watts is definitely not what I've seen from this panel, so the capacity paying that much for a solar panel is definitely gonna be down from what you, what you think it is. So guys, I know this was only a quick, short little video, but I've been getting heaps of messages about the solar panel and how we've been able to stay off-grid as long as we have with just having a really simple 12 volt setup. So I hope this has given you guys a little bit of information and given you a bit of an idea of how easy it is to run solar on the top of your camper trailer if you liked the video guys don't forget to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the mods that we do to the jaco camper trailer and if you want to see more of what we've done to the jaco so far check out the playlist up on screen now and i'll see you over there